So when we did this, one of the other things uh, we did beyond just showing that the channels didn't work um, were that we thought to ourselves, well, is there any way that we can actually make the channels work? So we actually have quite a bit of experience because we've dealt with other diseases that are caused by channel defects as well. So I happen to work on several other uh, basically cardiac diseases or heart conditions um, that are associated with arrhythmias because those channels, different channels in this case, but don't work and don't work effectually. Um, there are also other neurological conditions that are due to dysfunction of channels as well. And so I have a group of investigators where their primary job is, what they're really good at is understanding channels and channel function. And in particular, what they're very good at is trying to make those channels work better. So in this case, it was a natural collaboration to bring in some of my pharmacology colleagues who work on channels, um, who are electrophysiologists, who study very much the biophysical properties of channels, and in particular, how to make those channels open and close with drugs, with pharmacology. And so we had had some experience with knowing certain medications that actually worked for other channels and how those might work. And so we tried some of those medications on our mutations to see if we could alter the way those channels were working. In this particular case, channels that were closed, essentially getting them to open up or being able to get the channels to work better, to conduct the potassium that they were not already conducting. What we found is that one particular medication, uh, a compound called Ono, in fact worked in some, but not all of those mutations. Um, so there were some mutations specifically where we could get, and we don't completely understand the mechanism yet, whether it's getting more channels into the membrane, whether it's getting those ant channels to proper function, to uh, operate better, but in any case, however it works, we could clearly see increased and normalized conduction. In addition, what we could see is even with the normal channel, we could actually increase the potassium conduction through the normal channel. So one of the hypotheses we have, or one of the things we're interested in following up, is can we now modulate that channel? Can we actually get that channel to open up more in patients with pulmonary hypertension, either those who specifically have mutations within that channel, or even, and this is certainly you know, a, a venture, a guess forward that I don't know the answer to, is it possible we can modulate that channel even in patients that don't have mutations because that channel is what we think is part of the way that the pulmonary artery senses oxygen as well as how it decides to constrict, how tight to be able to essentially close up those smooth muscles within the pulmonary arteries to help them to constrict. So let me explain that a little bit further. So one of the things that's important in the lungs is to be able to sense how much oxygen is around. If there's a lot of oxygen, you don't necessarily need to have as much blood flowing into the lungs. Whereas if there's not much oxygen to be able to oxygenate the blood, you need to have lots of blood flowing into the blood to be able to get good oxygen exchange, to get blood uh, to be able to carry oxygen to the rest of the body. So it's important for the way the pulmonary arteries work, whether they get big or whether they get small, to contract and to relax in proportion to how much oxygen is out there. So there are molecular mechanisms by which that pulmonary artery knows and senses how much oxygen is there. We believe, based on some other prior publications, as well as now our information that we have from these genetic studies, that dysfunction of that channel is actually leading to contraction of those pulmonary arteries, and that contraction of the pulmonary arteries is ultimately leading to the blood pressure that gets higher specifically within the lungs, or in other words, pulmonary hypertension. If there were a way to manipulate that, essentially to trick the pulmonary arteries into thinking that the oxygen tension was low, that essentially it was time for them to relax so that they could get more blood flowing into the lungs, that would be therapeutically a way to be able to treat potentially all forms of pulmonary hypertension. It's a hypothesis at this point. We don't know if that in fact will be true, but it offers, if you will, a druggable target. This is now something that from a therapeutic point of view, again, we've effectively developed medications or drugs for other channels for other diseases. So there's at least a precedent that you could develop drugs for this particular channel that would again be helpful for patients in terms of those that have defects within this channel, but even potentially more broadly, patients with all the different types of pulmonary hypertension. So that's what we're most excited about.